Cassini would have encountered the first wisps of gases in the extreme upper atmosphere about 1,190 miles above Saturn's visible cloud tops, where atmospheric pressure is equivalent to sea level on Earth. Small thrusters were designed to automatically fire to keep Cassini properly oriented, and its antenna locked on Earth, as atmospheric buffeting begins. But within one minute of entry, about 120 miles into the discernible atmosphere, with the thrusters overwhelmed, Cassini was expected to begin tumbling and telemetry to come to an abrupt end. A few moments after that, the atmosphere's extreme heating would rip Cassini apart and utterly destroy its components. It goes really fast, said spacecraft engineer Julie Webster. First, there, insulation, blankets will burn off, and then we'll reach the aluminium melting point within about 20 seconds. The iridium will be the last thing to melt, and it will go about 30 seconds after the aluminium. It goes within a minute. Cassini's final signal, traveling across the solar system at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, will reach a huge antenna in Australia 83 minutes later, at 7.55 a.m. That's when flight controllers, engineers and scientists gathered at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory will know Cassini and its $3.4 billion mission well and truly gone.